G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I'm going to be covering a very uh, useful Dynamo script. It's actually one of my favourites um, that's probably saved me the most time, and that's uh, applying revisions to multiple sheets at the same time. Now there are apps out there that do this, but to be honest, this is how I typically manage this myself. I've actually done this on the channel before in the past when I looked at building a Dynamo player user interface and a data shapes interface, um, but it got a little bit buried in, in my video catalog, so I wanted to rerun this video and also show you how I build it these days. There's a couple of changes with the script. Um, I'm gonna be using both data shapes and crumple for custom packages and Revit 2020 and Dynamo 2.3, um, but pretty much any version beyond that should work as well. Anyway, let's dive in. So I'm in a model that has quite a few sheets in it. Um, in this case, a whole bunch of documentation sheets for a, a housing project. Um, and in my title block, I am showing um, each revision that is issued. I'm gonna create a new revision. And let's say we wanna apply this to all the sheets in the project. So I'm just gonna add revision three. Um, now the usual manual process is very manual. So in this case, on each sheet, you would go down to the revisions on sheet property and assign an extra revision. And assuming you've set up your revision table to show all the revisions, you'll see it in the table as well. It will also show the latest revision as the current revision number. Um, but to do this over and over again, especially for a large sheet set, is obviously incredibly inefficient, but also incredibly boring and a big waste of your time. So we're going to use Dynamo to build a tool that can do this for us. So I'm going to open up Dynamo. And we're going to build a user interface as well to help us better guide the process um, in a more selective way. So I'm going to use the data shapes package as well. So I'm going to make a new script and I'm just going to maximize my window. So we're going to build firstly our user interface. So we're going to be targeting the multiple input form plus plus as our destination for our primary user interface, but we need to give it some inputs. So we're going to give it three things to use for inputs. We're going to give it a drop down to pick a revision. We're going to give it a list view to show which sheets we want to apply or remove the revision from. And we're going to build a Boolean for true or false as to whether we want to add or remove uh, the outcomes. So in this case, um, I'm going to go to data shapes, UI, uh, input. So we're going to need in this case a Boolean. And we're also going to need a list view for our sheets. And we're going to need a drop down data field as well. So in this case, uh, first of all, we're gonna collect all of our project revisions. Um, I believe I have a node in my own custom package crumple for this. I think it's under Revit um, revisions or I might, I might have one. I'm not sure if I do actually. I think I might potentially be thinking of another, another package that has revisions. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll just get all the revisions instead. So I'm gonna get um, an element type name. I think it's an element type. And I'm gonna go down to revision and I'm going to get all elements of type to get all the revisions possible in my project. Now, in this case, we're going to use keys and values. Um, keys being what the people see in the user interface and values being what gets passed through in the background. So obviously seeing revision 49030 wouldn't really tell the user much about what they're selecting in data shapes. So I'm actually going to get in this case, I'm going to try the name first of all and see how that looks. And that looks pretty good. So that shows them the sequence and also the description as well. So I'm going to make this my key, but I'm going to make the revisions themselves the value that the user actually selects in the background. Now there's a whole bunch of other input elements here as well, such as what do we want to call this input. So I'm going to make a code block for this. I'm just going to call this uh, select a revision. I'm going to say that the default index is zero. So the first one, and we'll say true for sorting. So I'm going to say select a revision. The first is the default and true. So at that point, we've effectively built one button in our user interface. So I'm just going to group that off and just call this um, select a revision. And I like to usually make um, user interface buttons uh, green or pink, just something that makes it obvious that they're just generating your user interface. The list view is a, a little bit more complex. Um, in this case, we're going to want to get all, um, in this case, the sheets in our project. Now I prefer to just get the sheets that aren't placeholders. So I do have a node in Crumple for this under Crumple, Revit, um, and I think under Sheets. And it's just called in this case, um, Sheets Cleaned. So that allows you to either include or exclude placeholders. In this case, I'm gonna make a code block with false, just to exclude any sheets that aren't in my documentation set. 
Um, again, we're going to need keys and values. The keys and values are a little bit more complicated this time because we're going to want to know the sheet name and number and build a naming rule from that. So I'm going to go back a step and we're going to be first looking for sheet number and sheet name. So I'll just look for number and one of these should be for sheets eventually. There it is. And then the other one should be, I think it's sheet dot sheet name. There it is. So we're going to do the number colon the name. So we're going to build a little naming rule. So we need to put these together because currently we just have something that looks like that. Um, so in this case, I'm going to build a code block. I'm going to say NA, uh, sorry, NU for number plus. I'm going to build a string with a colon and a space. And then I'm going to do plus NA for name. And I can combine these two variables together with that separator to build something that looks a little bit like this. So in this case, our sheets are actually going to be our values. And this little rule that we've built is going to be our keys. So keys and values. So a similar principle, but a slightly more complex way of building it. In this case, I'm going to call my input um, select sheets. And I'll build a second code block underneath here just because it's getting a little bit crowded. You can build an optional height if you want to limit how high this input is. I'm going to say in this case, it's uh, I'll say it's 300 high and see how we go with that. Um, in this case, we're going to just set a couple of true and false inputs so we can tune um, all the options for our list view. So we're going to say it's 300 high. Uh, we don't want to highlight anything in view. We don't want to display anything. We don't want to show the element count. We're going to leave the default value indexes, indices alone. Um, and we are going to sort and we're not going to show ID. So we've built like a couple of options in there. But at this point, we have the, the button or the section of our UI that's going to be dealing uh, with our sheets. Select sheets. This one's going to let us pick multiple things at once. Finally, we have a Boolean where true is add and false is remove. Um, now, you could use different inputs here. You could do a radio button potentially as well. Um, I find a Boolean here is probably just easier to keep things simple. So the input name here is add remove. Uh, the default value, I would say, in this case, will be true. Um, I believe it looks like the default value is false. So we'll say in this case that true is to add. And side text um, could just be um, add equals true or something something along those lines. It's up to you sort of how you communicate that to your, to your users. Um, but at that point, we have our third and quite simple input in this case. So in this case, we'll just say add or remove. And we're going to collect these all in a list. So data shapes requires you to combine these into a single list that gets connected into the user interface node. So we have our inputs. We also have, in this case, our inputs in our UI. Now, it's not going to run it straight away because currently the toggle field is set to false. So our UI is going to output set toggle to true. I'm going to add a couple of parameters in here first. I'm going to say add revisions to sheets is the title of our UI. Um, for logo, I'm not going to worry about that for now. For the button text, I'm going to, in this case, say um, run uh, toggle. I'll set separately. Um, you can set a link to a help file if you have one. I'm going to write my cancel button text. My maximum height is purely up to me. I'll just try, in this case, 1100 or maybe, uh, maybe 1000. And the label width is uh, for later versions of data shapes. That's just how wide the side labels are. Um, I'll try in this case 175 and see how this looks. I'll leave the width, uh, actually I'll make the width um, maybe 600 for now. And again, we'll just see how this looks. So the description, the run button, uh, the cancel button, max height, width and label. Um, the last thing we need to do is we'll switch over to manual mode at this point, but I'm going to create a Boolean input just to say that, yes, we do want to run this. And as soon as I run this, I should hopefully see my UI. I'm just going to say, in this case, uh, revisions to sheets. And if I hit run, there, there we go. That's our data shape to UI. So that looks pretty good, actually. Um, in this case, you can see that we can just say that add equals true um, or or false. Um, we don't have to have, in this case, um, the decide text. It's really up to how you want to guide your users. You can see how the dropdown works. So in this case, we can pick a revision. Let's say revision two. And we can also select all, select none, or selectively choose sheets in this case. So maybe we don't want to add a revision to our home screen. Um, but otherwise, this would give us the outputs 
to run the next step of our script. So I'm going to leave those outputs um, as they are, because currently they're sitting as outputs in the UI. But I'm going to just say this is the, the UI. So now we need to break up this output list, because we'll see that the list is actually a list of lists. We have a revision, we have a list of sheets at index 1, and we have true at index 2. So what I'm going to do is use a code block, and I'm just going to say in this case uh, out 0, and I'm going to put 0 in square brackets. So I'm using what's called design script at this point to just call out the respective indices of a common variable, which I'm calling out. And once I do this, we should retain our outputs, but you can see that out2 now is just true. So it's very straightforward um, as a result. Now I have two nodes inside Crumple, um, heavily inspired by the ones from Archilab. Uh, in this case, I just use them so often that I wanted to build my version into the scripts, um, but they really are quite similar to the ones from Archilab, so I definitely have to credit them for, for um, you know, doing most of the hard work in researching how this works. But I've got a sheet add revisions and a sheet remove revisions. So given a set of sheets and given a set of revisions and a run me, it will essentially um, either add or remove those revisions from those sheets. So rather than working in parallel, it works with a set of revisions for each sheet provided. So it's a little bit different to the list management in the Archilab node, but it's how I typically found I need to run the script. But we just have one revision for a list of sheets in this case. Now let's think about how the add and remove input works. So in this case, um, similarly to the way the Archilab node works, I've added a, a run me input where if it's false, it won't do anything. Even if I put sheets and revisions in, it won't run the process. So in this case, it gives us the option to build a, a gate essentially for adding or removing rather than using two scripts. So when it's true, we're going to want to run add me. But when it's false, we're going to want to run remove me. But we're not going to want to remove when we say add is true. So what I'm going to do is add a not condition. And what this will do is flip true into false and false into true. So now when we, when we say add is true, we're going to run this one, but not run this one. And vice versa, when this is false, we're not going to run this. We flip this into a true, and then we remove the revisions instead. So we can build separate logic pathways in this manner. From here, um, we can also say now we have in this case our revision, and we have our sheets. And that's pretty much it. Um, at this point, the, the script will do its thing. Um, you can also add a little message just to tell people the script is finished. So I have a node in Crumple uh, called UI Messenger, which just sends a message to the user. In this case, um, it has a title, a body, and it can pass something through if you want to. Now you can count the number of sheets if you want to, just to say action applied to X number of sheets. In fact, maybe we will do that. So if I just count, the number of sheets that we dealt with. We can say in this case that we want to turn this into a string as well, because we need to put it into a text message. And in this case, we're going to see here 21 things happened. Our node probably just already ran, so we already added 21 revisions. So we will run this through Dynamo Player, um, just so it's easier to see what's happening. What I'm going to do here is just build a little message. Now, first, I'm going to put on the first row my title, and we'll just say uh, script complete completed and then for the message we'll say n for a number variable and then we'll say plus and space uh, sheets updated so we're just telling the user um, very simply how many things we've just updated just so they've got confidence that they did make it through the user interface and everything worked so we can make that our title and our body and when I run this we'll now see it tells us 21 sheets have been updated so it's a really simple script um, once it all goes together. We can actually just go and remove all these elements now because our UI is just sort of refreshed. And I'll just remove them, and then we'll run this through Dynamo Player instead. Um, but at this point, we can see pretty much most of the script is a user interface, and then some custom nodes closer to the end in this case. So if I just um, save this script, uh, open Dynamo Player, and I navigate to where I've saved this script to, uh, we should be able to run it as well um, using a much more simple method for someone that doesn't know how to use Dynamo. So in this case, I'm on uh, sheet 10, which is part of the main sheet set. So I'll say run. And at this point, we should be able to update multiple sheets with a revision, um, either adding or removing it. So let's say all sheets except for the home screen. Revision 2, run. 21 sheets updated. We can see this one has it. If we go to other sheets, we should see that they've also picked it up as well. Fantastic. So it's, it's a really quick, simple script, and we can add more revisions if we want to. 
Sorry, nice little car alarm going off in the background there. Don't know if that's coming through. So I run this and I can do the same thing. Another revision. Um, I can also remove revision. So if I know I've made a mistake, um, I can just say I want to take off revision 2 by turning off the add condition. And there we go. We've got a batch revision processor, essentially. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful and saves you a little bit of time. So hopefully that was a useful script um, that you can apply in your office. This is a very common task that has to be run when we're issuing sets of drawings. Um, I think we can all relate to it regardless of whether we're architects or engineers. If you're using Revit and you're issuing sheets, you've done this at least once manually, I guarantee you. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.